The following episode of the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters was originally broadcast on February 7th, 2023. It's time now for Business Matters, brought to you by Mokulele Airlines with your host, Pam Tumpop. Good morning, Pam. Hey, Gary. Good morning. Thank you so much for working with us and helping us with this show. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Business Matters. I'm Pamela Tumpop, president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce. And today we've got an exciting morning. We're going to speak with Senator Gil Keith-Ageron on workforce development, working with the University of Hawaii Maui College on expanded programs and important bills that Maui residents should know about. Then we're going to discuss some of the housing measures that the Chamber of Commerce is tracking and hear from one of our Made in Maui County Festival vendors. But let's get started this morning with Senator Gil Keith Ageron. He grew up in Paia and Kahului, which cultivated his passion for Maui and Valley Isle residents. He is Assistant Majority Whip, served as State Representative for Maui for 2009 to 2013, and has served as a State Senator representing Maui ever since. And he is doing some important work these days. Gil, aloha and good morning. Good morning. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, we were just briefly, before Gary had to put us on hold, <laughs> talking a little bit about workforce development. Can can you share some of the things that you've been hearing on, you know, what's happening in, in workforce development and, and some of the changes we've seen coming out of the pandemic that we haven't seen before? Well, I, I think what we're seeing that's a little different is usually enrollment at the community colleges goes up, um, you know, coming out of a an economic downturn, but this time um, we're not seeing the same thing. And and I, I think what we've been focused on working with Chancellor Hokuana and some others is looking at how we can um, provide uh, training and education for areas that are short of workers. I mean, obviously, um, restaurants and others are having a lot of trouble, and I don't think you're going to you're going to need the training at UH Maui College for that, but we're also looking at uh, healthcare fields. Is really what we're we've been focused on. Um, I co-sponsored a bill with Representative Hashimoto uh, to expand the certified nurse aide to practical nurse bridge program at UH Maui College, and we're hoping that that um, that will continue to provide additional nurses uh, for all the all the medical. Um, pra- practices on, on our island. Uh, we know that during the pandemic and continuing beyond there, um, every hospital in the state has been relying on travelers, uh, traveling yeah. nurses, who generally are going to be more expensive. And we have the additional challenge on Maui of having difficulty in finding places for them to stay. Um, during the pandemic, uh, the hotels, you know, were uh, had a lot of rooms open, and the rates were a lot cheaper. Now, uh, I'd be surprised to find any hotel that is charging less than um, rack rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a really good point because you know we know how critical our housing shortage is, but we forget that we had a great. Um, partner in the hotels who, when the rooms were net capacity, made those available for the traveling nurses. And so now we've really got a crunch there. Yeah. And then Chancellor Hokuana is also pursuing um, expanding its vo- vo- vocational technology um, program. And part of, part of that is um, an appropriation he asked for last year, which is to renovate some of the facilities that he has. Um, if you remember, the original Maui Community College buildings are still there, um, and we're, and he's he would what he's looking for is to renovate and use those for um, additional vocational um, vocational technology training, and he's actually hoping that with some additional funding this year, he may also 
pursue a partnership that we've been talking about for a while, and it's a partnership with it's our sister camp at the Kapilamani uh, mm. to train medical technicians. Um, it's another area that we're short of on the island, and um, any resident on Maui who wants to get that kind of training would have to leave the island, and hopefully they'll come back. Um, but, you know, med-, med techs are in demand, and um, I think it would be better for us if we could provide some training here on island. And one of the first steps is to provide a facility here um, that will be able to partner with Kapilamani online to provide that training. That's fantastic. Again, these are these are the types of jobs that we always talk about right now. <laughs> How do we bring in new jobs and create new jobs? Uh, one that fills an important need, and two um, has you know gets us much closer than the, to the to a living wage for our residents. Um, yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces too because uh, we have a lot of students who are applying, but. Um, we're having to turn away quite a number of students in our nursing program every year, and it's somewhat of a function of lack of instructors. Um, we're having a hard time attracting attracting enough instructors um, because right now you can make a better living um, in practice than um, in, than providing um, instruction at UH Maui College. So yeah. we're trying to see how if there's ways we can address that, um, both in recruiting and re- and retaining instructors. That's an yeah, that's an interesting challenge. Uh, we had Peter Ingram of Hawaiian Airlines recently speak to the chamber, and he was saying that uh, the university system was was talking about lack of instructors, and then he said, "Well." It, it, it didn't. He didn't realize that they were challenged with the lack of instructors. But he was saying, "Well, we've got instructors at Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> so within the business themselves, they said we we can provide the university system with instructors um, because we've got the pilot instructors. So we had to look at it a different way. And that was interesting that it had been held up, and they didn't realize that that was some of the issues in in moving the program forward. So once they figured that out, they found within the industry, they can come up with a new solution. So how how are we looking at that solution? And are there instructors that where instead of bringing in, in nurses that we've brought in on a rotating basis, are there instructors that we could be bringing in on a rotating basis who might want in a that six month be, or a year? That might be one solution. The other might be to actually see if we can work with um, – you know, with with nurses in practice who um, would like to provide instruction part time, and see if uh-huh. if there's a way to partner with their with with them and maybe with their bosses. I mean, if if I, I know everyone um, in the healthcare field is fairly busy, um, but it's possible that we may be able to um, find some people who are willing to pilot a program. Uh, the other thing is, if we, I mean, if you know, I mean, um, Maui Community College used to, you know, have a lot of instructors who were people in the business community um, mm-hmm. who would come in and teach um, at the college. Um, and it, and I don't know if the challenges have changed um, because the uh, enrollment drives so much of what what's offered at the college. Um, I, I think if there's not enough students signing up for a particular course, then uh, they really they really can't hold um, the class. And but you know what we're discussing today is not the case. So I think what what we're discussing is an area where um, there's a lot of interest, um, and we just right now don't have enough instructors to provide um, the additional classes. Yeah. I, I mean, that, uh, that's a really rough spot to be in. And to, again, as, as the, we've been building phenomenal programs at the college and and have so many students interested to be turning them away at a time when this this is great, you know, there should be great opportunities for them is a huge challenge. Um, how can how can we help with that as a as a chamber as a community? Um, you've got the interest. 
uh, are we working with other um, other hospitals across the state and talking to them? Are they having the same challenge as well? I, I think most of the hospitals are having the same challenges as, as far as having to turn to traveling nurses. Um, but, um, you know, they on Oahu, you've got, you know, you've got quite a number of, of, of institutions of higher learning, both public and private, that are providing nursing training. So they have a little bit, they have a little bit more cushion as, as far as um, training new nurses coming into the profession. Um, I think um, on Maui, you know, we just have the, you know, the single cohort that we train each year at UH Maui College. Uh, but you know, there's there's possibilities that we could do work with um, Maui Health System, which who is also right now in transition. So um, it may be something that um, we can start, but we may have to wait for um, the next head of the of the system to be hired to really to really get something going. Yeah. There's a lot. Of <laughs> a lot. Yeah, it's interesting as we're looking at this. There's so many different dynamics to this, and again, change, just even changing positions and changing leaders in key positions is is um, is one of those key things that you know. Sometimes you just have to to wait and see where that lands, and then move forward. Yeah, I I, I find it fascinating. One of the people I'd love to talk to about it is also Joe Pluta, and. You know, we've got that West Maui Hospital that we're talking about. Of course, they're going to have to staff that as well. But and that's still been a long time coming. But um, I'm wondering about people like Brian Hoyle and maybe what suggestions they might have or resources they're thinking about as they're continuing to push forward with the West Maui Hospital. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, you were you were have been such a big proponent of working on these programs, and it's really exciting to uh, you know know that that we're looking at. And I love the idea of again the technical training side of this, uh, looking at the medical technicians and and being able to have some capacity here so that they can use equipment here on Maui and then do the distance learning with Kapiolani. Uh, I think, and of course. Everybody is so interested. Coming out of COVID, you know, we have a new norm now. So distance learning, which, you know, we sort of struggled to kind of, in the early days, get off the ground. And then it was expanding. Uh, Today, everybody is excited about that. So I think that's a phenomenal option. Tell us about some of the other bills that you've introduced this year that you think would be really important for Maui residents to know about things you think we should follow. Yeah, what we over the last couple of years, we've expanded ambulance services uh, throughout the state on the Big Island, on Kauai, and uh, most recently on Molokai. And this year, there was a request to uh, provide funding for an additional ambulance in Central Maui, um, mm-hmm. mainly because with the growth of the Central Maui area, um, at times, um, what we've been told is. Um, ambulances have had to be dispatched from South Maui to come to uh, Central Maui, um, which wow. you know, it, it, when you think about that, maybe that uh, it would be, make more sense to have another ambulance station station here in Kahului or Wailuku. Yes, um, we also are introduce a couple of bills, um, uh, mainly on the edges of the way we deal with certain things. Um, right now, our advanced health care directive form um, doesn't give you the choice of using a non-opioid uh, pain management option. So that, that little change um, will give people um, an opportunity to pick that rather than to have pain management with an opioid. Mm-hmm. Can you We're talk a little also, bit about that, Gil? Because, you know, I mean... Some people hear about and others don't really know about the opioid crisis we've seen. 
And so can you talk a little bit about the importance of this opioid option? Yeah, well, I, I, I think it's, um, I think throughout the country, I mean, there's been a lot of people who have become dependent on opioids. Um, but um, at the end of life, um, I think when you, if you know anything about advanced healthcare directives, you can choose one of the choices you need, you can make is whether to be put on some kind of pain medication. Um, and the usual pain medication that uh, prescribed would be opioids. Um, uh, and depending on how long you're on there, I, I think what we're trying to avoid is having someone addicted, which has become a really big problem on the mainland. But this is, that's just a little, a little thing that we're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. Other bills that um, I think people should be paying attention to is um, we are really this year have a, a, a large number of bills uh, proposing different ways of reducing the general excise tax mm -hmm. on over-the-counter medication and groceries. And, yes. you know, some are going to be tiered towards um, reductions over four years, uh, you know, like 1% a year. Others uh -huh. are more geared towards providing expanded credits um, that would be made available. Um, one of the one of the debates that always happens about um, re reducing the scope of the of GET is right. that um, its broadness is what makes it um, one of you know one of the most effective and efficient. Um, taxes that um, any state has right. um, and so um, and a good portion of it gets exported to our visitors who when right. they're here also will be charged with GET so we're looking at uh, so some people prefer the idea that maybe we should provide expanded um, tax credits for it so that the people who benefit from the reduction would be um, Hawaii residents you know, I will say that, again, especially coming out of, well, we've, we've advocated, the Chamber has advocated for this before as well, but also coming out of COVID and, and recognizing that the GET on groceries and medication really hits those who can least afford it most. But um, I do hear what you're saying, and I, I would agree that, again, looking more at these expanded tax credit options may be a better way to go. Do you have a sense? What, 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 is, what is your sense? Do you have a feel for what you think works better? Um, you know, I would want to make sure that, um, that the benefit gets spread among our residents as wide as possible mm -hmm. of any kind of reduction. Um, some of the proposals right now are aimed really at those who uh, qualify for SNAP or WIC benefits, um, which is the which is the neediest part of our of our population. But I right. think anyone that's living here um, does see the impact of the GET when they go out and they buy buy any kind of groceries. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to make see if we can structure the tax credits to. Um, to be useful for as many of our tax filing residents as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And the bills are the bill; those bills are being heard, and I would expect that it's a, something that's going to continue throughout throughout the session. Um, we're in the we're in the that nearing. We're actually getting close to the first deadline that needs to be met for all the bills that were introduced. Um, the House actually has until this week to move out bills that have been referred to three committees. Mm -hmm. And both the House and the Senate have until next week to um, send bills to the final committee that's going to be hearing these bills um, in their own chamber. So it's, as happens in a 60-day session, uh, it, it's a fairly quick process and bills have to be heard and and 
voted on the floor and they need to move on to the next committee. So there's going to be, there's been a lot of culling of the 3,000 or so bills that were introduced um, in the first week of the session. <laughs> you know, I haven't even looked up the number yet this year. I, I, I know we're still rapidly in the chamber going through you know, reading through the bills and, and uh, starting to comment and get through everything. And as you said, the, the ones that have triple referrals are the hardest because those it's hard to get three meetings and get things passed with triple referrals. Um, so we've been starting to look at that. But I didn't even look at the numbers. So this year we're over 3,000 new introductions. Uh, that's, that's the rough number that we're working with. Wow. Uh, we always say one year it was very close to four, uh, but <laughs> but we're up there again and again, understandably so. I mean, coming out of COVID with so many things that you know we're we're looking at through a new lens. Sure, but a lot of the bills, of course, are there's a lot of duplication in the bills, mm -hmm. um, different versions of measures. Like for example, the the reduction the GET for groceries and medications has a lot of different versions that a lot of different uh, legislators have introduced, as well as what the governor has introduced. I think the governor's, uh, the governor's, the governor has um, a package of bills that uh, he's calling his affordability plan, um, and I don't know at this point, um, you know, whether those bills are being heard or whether legislators are looking at their own bills. Um, and just focus, just sort of uh, li listening to what the administration says um, should be incorporated in them, maybe from uh, Governor Green's plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch. Well, Gil, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great to have you on the show. We'd love to have you on again during the session when you have time to to give us updates and and uh, just really appreciate the knowledge that you're sharing with us and all that you do to serve Maui County and our, our entire state. Well, thanks for having me. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, my, my mother always gets up fairly early. Um, but this morning I felt it was, a, it was a little tough getting up because I actually, during the session, live in Pearl City and I have to drive into the Capitol. So uh. I got up pretty early to come in so that I could do this call. Well, I hope Mom's listening. Yeah, if, um, well, she's home, <laughs> so hopefully she, she listens to the radio in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 that it's true. People forget that our our legislators uh, generally are living in Honolulu during during sessions and the key parts of session. But are you, hopefully, you're still getting to come home on the weekends. I'm planning to. Oh, good. Well, I sure appreciate you. I I appreciate all you do, and thank you for getting up early to be with us this morning and share this great information. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You bet. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Goodbye. Aloha. All right. Well, we're going to – great to hear from Senator Gil keith Ogren. We're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsor, Mokalele. Mokalele Airlines operates the largest commuter airline hub in the country, right here in Kahului. Fly Mokalele from Kahului to Molokai, Manai, Hana, Waimea, Kona, and now Hilo. Mokalele also operates the only flights between Kapalua and Honolulu. There is never a middle seat on Mokalele, and every seat has a window and aisle. Visit MokaleleAirlines.com and take your next flight from the newly renovated Mokalele Terminal. Welcome back to Business Matters. Hey, Pam, can you tell us uh, what's happening at the legislature? What is the chamber keeping an eye on over there? Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for asking. You know, it, as Gil said, things are moving fast and furiously. And, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the process, bills can get referred to multiple committees. And one of the most challenging things in getting a bill through, because the process has been so quickly, is what they call a triple referral, which uh, Senator Agaron was talking to us about, that they're working on now. So if, if a bill got refer referred to three different committees, 
uh, they're going through their current house, the house that introduced it in, and so it's a lot of work to get through those three committees. Many bills die um, during this time because they just they they prioritize the you know really important bills, and then they try and get to those with triple referrals, meaning um, there's a lot of people who feel that it would need more work. So. It's interesting to see, but what we're fo- what I'd like to focus on a little bit today, we're going through as many of these bills as we can. Uh, we're tracking them. You can track them online at the Capitol website, and you can also learn about all of your legislators and who's working on that. But some of the things that we're working on right now deal with housing. Um, we're also, you know, looking to this session that we're looking to work with legislators on how to remove barriers for building new housing projects, interested in new ideas, how we can make it easier for residents to afford housing, um, and to look at how we fill the gap. And that can be not just, you know, when we talk about housing, a lot of people don't want or really can't afford a, a home per se. They Many want a, a you know, whether we have a younger generation or older generations who don't want to keep up a house and a big yard and all of that comes with that, we're looking at rentals as well. And that's going to be a key thing that we want to keep sh- make sure is in the focus. But as these address- the issues are being addressed at the state legislature this year, you're going to notice um, that many bills have been introduced by Representative Troy Hashimoto from Maui and Senator Chang um, as they are the chairs of the House and Senate Housing Committee. So these are the leaders of those committees. So um, we refer to bills by HB or SB. HB means House Bill, um, and that would be uh, under Senator, uh, excuse me, uh, under Representative Troy Hashimoto's, a lot of his bills, and then SB is Senate bills. So House Bill 648 was introduced by Representative Hashimoto. This is a bill that will temporarily expand the rent of the state's rent supplement program to qualify individuals and target those who are 62 years of age or older and are homeless or at imminent, imminent risk, excuse me, of becoming homeless. So we're looking for seniors now who are highly challenged in housing. And according to the bill, low-income Kapuna sometimes face homelessness because of fixed incomes and rapidly rising rents across the state. And this bill seeks to address that gap to keep Kapuna in their homes or to supplement uh, their incomes to find homes to rent. So this is, you know, sometimes there are these problems that we don't realize you know, we may see homelessness, but maybe we don't realize some of the issues behind it, like our Kapuna. We often talk about uh, younger generations who have been displaced with rent issues. And now we're finding in the state, it's got data to say, our Kapuna are really struggling to find and stay in, find housing or stay in their homes. So this is a really great bill. Um, House Bill 673, introduced by Representative Troy Hashimoto. Uh, this allows the counties to reclassify lands of 15 to 100 acres in certain rural, urban, and agricultural districts when at least 50% of the housing units on the land are to be set aside for what they call the 140% uh, AMI level. AMI means area media, medium income. So again, this is a way of qualifying your income level. Um, it's used by HUD and, and the federal agencies to look at housing this way. And all of our county and state look at housing this way. And so basically what we're saying is where we have large parcels of land um, that have bigger acreage, we can reclassify that um, and make that more affordable and put, you know, uh, give that, turn that land from those current zoning designations into housing areas. And so that's a bill to watch because, again, we're going to have to look at new land areas to build the housing that we need um, that we're behind on. House Bill 791 was introduced by Representative Mizuno. This bill establishes a housing assistance program to provide state grants and rental subsidies to private property owners who set aside, construct, or improve accessory dwellings on their properties and rent the units to families or individuals who are homeless. So, again, 
the question is, how do we come up with some of these out-of-the-box solutions to find new ways uh, many people can have room to put cottages on their home or have maybe some space in their home that they could separate out a little bit on their private property and create maybe a little rental unit. It could be a studio. It might be a cottage. Uh, but it, it, some people might be creating duplexes. But there's ways to look at um, how we can work with our existing property owners to create new space for renters. Uh, House Bill uh, 1117, 1117, introduced by Maui Representative Justin Woodson. This bill authorizes the Hawaii Housing and Finance Development Corporation to assist the Department of Education. And, uh, and Justin's been very involved on the Educational Committee in developing teacher housing and contract or sponsor a development housing project with any state development or agency. So lots of aim also with our teacher shortages targeted at teacher housing. Uh, Senator Argaron mentioned again the need for uh, housing for nurses as well and medical professionals. So. We're trying to also recognize that how our housing app not only affects our residents, but also affects uh, keeping people here who are needed in key industries that service our critical needs. We have Senate Bill 140 introduced by Senator Chang. This bill requires the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development to develop and analyze and projected housing needs and to identify adequate sites for housing that would meet housing demands for all income levels each year. So the the chamber prior to COVID did two housing forums uh, back in 2017 and October of 2019, again, just to, to look at how do we chip away at this. And what I like about this bill is he's saying in, in, the, Office of, in the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, we need ongoing analysis. We are already behind and we know it. So what we're doing is we're requiring that they identify each year um, – what's needed, and they're looking at what's needed to identify a housing site and the amount of housing that would be needed, so the total demand of housing for all income levels, from those who are unsheltered and are on the street to those different levels of area media income, I mentioned the AMI levels, uh, to market rate housing for our residents. So their job is going to be to look at this holistically, which we completely appreciate. Then we have Senate Bill 336, introduced by Senator Chang. This bill restricts any county from disapproving or imposing certain conditions that render the project not feasible on a housing development or an emergency shelter unless a preponderance of evidence shows that the project would have significant adverse impacts on public health or safety in order to comply with the state or federal levels. And they make sure that uh, they're looking at zoning and applicable ordinances. So we have a lot of people who are homeless right now. There was a, they showed people this morning on television saying, the, the homeless people saying the state, idea, the state has no idea how big this issue is. And that is part of the problem. It's, it's a huge issue. And we have a lot of people unsheltered right now. And we see them in Maui County. And to see them every day and know, especially with all the wind and the rain, the huge rains we've had lately, imagine what it's like to be living in a beach park or, or sleeping on a bench or trying to stay warm. Um, it, 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 whatever challenges people are going through, it's really hard to move forward in life when you're so challenged that you can't even get a good night's sleep or feel warm and comforted to make improvements in your life. So there's a lot of bills and, and we and others in Maui County are working on how we protect people first and foremost, how we get roofs over people's heads to give them a safe place to store their things, to give them a safe place and shelter where they can sleep and, and have access to food and, and have great meals. And, you know, we know a lot of our homeless population has a number of challenges, but then we have, once we've got them to sort of a stable place, then we have abilities to do more help. So, excuse me, that is my daughter calling in, and um, <laughs> I will have to call her back, but uh, she
she forgot that I'm on radio this morning. And then we have a bill, Senate Bill 766, introduced by Senator Kanuha. This bill requires the State Historic Preservation District to contract its review to third-party consultants if the project's involved in the development of affordable housing um, and if the division determines it will not be able to complete the review within 60 days. So this and the bill I just mentioned also address the process of moving forward with housing. And one of the huge challenges that we have had with the process is that there can be many different levels. We pass things back between county and state, and um, also the State Historic Preservation Division um, has been an area that's been noted where sometimes things can get held up and there have been delays. So what you're finding this legislative session is people are looking at, you know, what's going on in these processes? What are the holdups? How do we mitigate uh, delays in these areas so that we can address this critical issue? of housing our residents. Uh, so we hope that you'll watch these, and, and the Chamber will be putting some information on the Chamber website. We advise our members on different bills that are important and, and to be watched and what we're doing on our tracking over the course of time. But this is a critical time, and, and if you have, you know, this is a time where if you have ideas, get involved in the process. One of the great things that has come out of COVID, both during COVID and and now coming out of COVID, is that you can testify at, at the state level now without having to go over. Now, you've always been able to testify without having to go over by sending in your written documentation, <clears throat> but they, they've not necessarily gotten to hear your voice, to hear you explain why you're so passionate about this. And in the early days, uh, when I first joined the chamber, we advocated for over a decade to say, neighbor islanders are, are removed from the process. If we can't afford to fly over or time doesn't allow us to, our voice is heard less than others. And so, you know, pe people who live on Oahu or, or bigger companies or organizations who have the, the funding to fly over and more time, you know, are there and better able to better advocate on their issues. But we all know that, that playing field has been leveled because now we can do video testimony. And there was a time when legislators said there's no way we could take in all this new testimony. But they had to, and they did during COVID, and now they recognize that it is possible. And, and not only is it possible, they, they've always wanted to do it, but they always saw it as being a challenge. Now they know that that, that wall has come down, and it's not the challenge they thought it would be. So I want to encourage you um, to to follow up on bills that are important to you and stay involved in the process and have your voice heard. Uh, I also want to do a quick plug uh, for the Maui Chamber of Commerce. Our big annual fundraiser is coming up, and we did, we were one of the last big events pre-COVID. It was in March 2020. We did Biz Mix Maui. It actually was on the university lawn at UHMC. Back then it was called Emergence. It is an avant-garde, exciting, multi-course dining experience with specialty cocktails and divine desserts, uh, with great entertainment, mix and mingle, networking, and some surprising performances. And the first time, it was on the, the college ground, and everybody had a spectacular time. It was a pretty windy night, I will tell you, in March 2020. Uh, some of our decor was blowing around, but that didn't matter. Everybody had a great time. We had rave reviews. And we're going to continue that this year with at the Grand Wailea uh, Maui at, in their courtyard and their ballroom. This time we're going to have both indoor and outdoor uh, cocktails and dining experience. We'll have a silent auction uh, for those who want to support the chamber. If you have an auction item you'd like to donate, we would deeply appreciate it. We also, you know, tickets are uh, $250. You can buy individual tickets. You don't have to be a, a chamber member to come to this event, and we're going to have some really great surprise entertainment that we'll be announcing soon, and there'll be an after party with dancing and fun, so it's a night of networking, dancing, and great experiences that you're really going to treasure, and we always say, bring your camera. This is an event where you want to bring your camera and get involved, so we hope you'll join us. To learn more, just visit uh, MauiChamber.com 
or call us at the office. Speak to Amber at 808-244-0081. And now, uh, Gary, do we have a Jocelyn on the phone? Yes, we do. Fantastic. Well, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Jocelyn Canaelli uh, from Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy Creations. Jocelyn is a professional pastry chef born and raised on Maui, and she and her team have had many years of creating desserts and pastries in many high-end hotels and kitchens before starting Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy Creations, which I just love the name. So we're going to have uh, Jocelyn tell us about that. And Jocelyn has been part of the Made in Maui County Festival. Good morning, Jocelyn. How are you this morning? Hi, good morning, Pam. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So glad to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you started Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy Creations. Yeah, so actually I've been employed with uh, Bev Gannon with Hali Mali, um Restaurant for quite some time. And during the, when, when the pandemic started, actually, that's when everything started to, you know, go the other way. And when we started to go back again, Beb mentioned to me, she was, why don't you start wholesale and, you know, start your business? So I was like, oh, okay. So that's how actually our company started with Happy Happy Joy Joy. And we started doing desserts for her. And that's how everything just started, um, you know, creating this whole dessert field of pastries and everything like that. So actually it's through Bev Gannon. That's how it actually got all started. <laughs> Well, we love Bev. Bev is a dynamic yeah. woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and a phenom in the restaurant industry. So she's, exactly, she's yeah. done very well, but it's nice to also to know um, that, that Bev is, you know, encouraging others to go out and, and get involved. So tell us a little bit about the types of desserts that you do and the products that you offer, and, and tell us about who are the people who are buying those. Yeah, so we we provide all kinds of um, desserts um, from specialty. We do specialty cakes, so we do cupcakes, um, all kinds of cookies, and uh, we also do like catering desserts too as well for um, people who have events for like um, weddings, anniversaries, you know, all kinds of um, celebrations. So we do all these type of desserts that are really bite sized, so they don't have to worry about cutting it. Everything is like easy to pick up and eat. So. You know, so it's really mess-free, um, so it's really easy to go through. And the people that actually come around, it's all local. Um, we have a bunch of um, people that love our desserts. Um, they say it's not so overly sweet, and, you know, everything is made from scratch. And um, we pride ourselves on the quality that we do, too, as well. And we have a small network of, of um, professionals that work with me. And we, we, we actually hone in to making sure that the quality is um, is there for our uh, for all of the public to actually come and enjoy. Now you mentioned small desserts, which I just love. <laughs> love <Yeah. laughs> I love finger. I love little finger, finger uh, desserts that you can have and have an array of different desserts. So that always sounds very fun to me. So um, when when people buy them, uh, is it mostly people buying for parties? Do you have other um, restaurants or event people who are bringing your desserts in? Are they pre? Are they like packaged in the box, or are there? Can people buy little uh, individual packaged products? Yeah, so actually, a lot of these um, when people buy them, it's a lot for um, for their events, for birthdays and stuff like that. But we also do a uh, regular size too. And actually, just recently, um, we've actually moved locations from Kalimali, <clears throat> uh, where we were located before. So now, actually, starting tomorrow on the Wednesday, we actually have a like a small storefront that we're actually opening, so people oh, can come and see us here. Yeah, Where's thank that? you. <laughs> so we are at 302 Waehu Beach Road. So it's right after Jack in the Box. It has a little, like a little, um, looks like a little cottage house on the right-hand side. Okay. It used to be the old Taco Kalo store, so now I'm actually leasing out the uh, location, and we're going to actually okay. start to do a soft opening tomorrow morning, which we start from 6 in the morning to 3 p.m. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, this was timely. I'm so glad you're on the show today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, 6 a.m. tomorrow, soft opening. Mm -hmm. not, not now. Hopefully everybody rushes over there. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking maybe not. Maybe, yeah. We yeah. Wanna, <laughs> give us a, they give can us a come day and visit any time they want to. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but I, I love that location, the old Papa 
Carlos store. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that somebody Yay. is going in there. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're going to offer you quite a bit area? of stuff. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Do you live in that area? Um, actually, I live up country, but oh, okay. um, I yeah. So actually, I come from up country. I come down here. So pretty much, yeah. We just pretty much right around here. So easy location Aww. to actually access. <laughs> uh, I love that, and, and I love when we get to see our old stores and and places that we cherish. We, we get new memories now, but we know that they're they're still being used. And and there you are in the local community. Great location though, too. Um, yeah. So do you do do anybody does anybody buy any um uh, of your products that are custom for their store or for for their business? Yeah, actually we we've actually partnered with um of course um Hali Mali and and of course Gannons. And also too we do uh, Mala Tavern in Lahaina as uh-huh. well. Um and there's a few others that we're actually going to be um uh, connecting with too as well um throughout the community. And then a lot of them been, of course, we were with the Maori Chamber of Commerce. We did the, um, you know, the Maiden Maui County Festival, too. We do a lot of, and we do also do the um, the Makeke. So the uh-huh. San and Lu, who does the Makeke. So we were connected with him, and we did a lot of that, too, as well. So, you know, we kind of, like, broadened our horizon with uh, with the community right now. <laughs> with these oh, I'm so excited. Well, you mentioned the festival. Tell us a little bit about how the festival went for you this, this year with... Our first year back coming out of COVID. Oh my God, this is actually our first year starting it, and it went really well. It was, it was, it was like, it was amazing. Um, we were surprised at how much people actually came to the event, and that was actually our first time being there. And it was a great communication with Amber and everybody, the whole team. Um, we got set up, and people just loved it. So what we offered there was the uh, our spiced macadamia nuts and another another flavor of it. So in it went out the door like crazy it was like oh my I, could, I couldn't believe how well it went actually so and people right after that people were even connected with me during the holidays and we were shipping that out to mainland all oh, over good. Center Island mainland and everything too so they went really well um, it was a great crowd great business opportunity to do that down there for you know for Maui <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. You know, it's it's one of the things that um, we enjoy most about our job <laughs> because it's such a great way to help small businesses and to help them reach new heights. Um, so I love hearing that not only did you do well at the event, but one of the whole points of the event is also to bring in wholesale buyers and distributors and people from, uh, you know, our neighbor islands and so that you are – selling abroad as well. So it's great to hear that you you were shipping, you know, throughout the state and to the mainland. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was amazing. I was like, wow, I can't believe how, how you know, how well that went. I never expected, but it actually went like crazy after that. <laughs> oh, good. Well, you're giving us a good plug to remind people that's going to be coming up this year again. So yes. we'll be having applications out shortly. So folks, you know, if you're a manufacturer, get ready. So, exactly. um, You've got a new location, and mm-hmm. so people are going to be able to find you there. And, and that's going to be your daily schedule, not just tomorrow, but you're going to do 6 a.m. to 3, kind of moving forward is the plan. Yes, yes. So we'll be open from Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. Okay. to 3 p.m. And we're going to be offering some, some food items, too. So we're going to try and bring back what the old Pacacalo store had, you know, previously what they used to carry before. So we have some small snacks and then eventually have some you know, some breakfast and lunch, lunch items, too, as well. So we're going to slowly integrate it into our our, our whole um, lineup, too, as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, how awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and how can people find you as well? Do you have – is there a website that we can go and see all the amazing things you're doing? Yes, actually, our website, um, we're actually fixing it at the moment, so under construction a little bit, but um, they can find us still at the website, and our website is at www dot h h j j creation dot com and they can also you know come by they can come talk story with us too as well check it out <laughs> at a yeah mm-hmm. oh my gosh I can't wait um, I'm 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 gonna after the show go run and check out my schedule and see if Amber yeah. and I can come by we can always drop it off to you as well so uh, over oh. here because of the parking look parking situation. We're yeah. going to try and eventually have it easier to wear. It's a grab and go, and maybe, you know, we can integrate online ordering or they can call in so that way when they pull up, we can actually come out and, you know, accommodate them so they don't have to, you know, 
kind of get out of the car and, you know, kind of weaving, and weaving in and out of traffic. So it'll probably look well, like you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, you, I forget. But, you know, it's been a while since I've been there. But, you know, you're right. I forget that that is that's in a crowded area. Especially, uh, I used to live out that way years ago. And so also in the morning it's very crowded because of the traffic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll need grab-and-go bags, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, folks... This is this is a really great opportunity. I mean, you have you have found a way to to deliver and and help people out in that area. If you're not familiar, it, it's the, in the morning when you're taking your kids to school and going to work. It's a mm-hmm. high traffic area, but think exactly. about driving and getting your goodies on the way to work. That's going to be exactly going to yeah. make your whole day. <laughs> Just going to make your whole day. Um, exactly. Well, I you know I I'm so glad that we we've, we've gotten to. To hear about this and to know that tomorrow is is the big day, but also that you're going to be bringing back some of the, the things that um, Paco Cola Store always offered. Uh, that yeah. you know, that's that's also really going to feel like home. I'm also excited because um, I'm dealing with, and I will call you separately, but just to put it out there for the universe in case anybody else has ideas like this that I'm dealing with some businesses who are, are wanting something specialty for their area. So knowing that, oh. you know, for their business that, that, you know, features their business, looks like their business, um, mm-hmm. adds to their product line, but they, are, you know, are not in the baking arena. So, right. you know, it's great to know that you can do some private labeling things for them. And, I mean, they might have yeah. to label it themselves, but that you you can do the baking and create the products for them. Okay. Um, Pam, we're down to one minute. Okay. Well, we're down to one minute, so I, I want everybody to visit Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy at Paco Kahlo. Uh Justin, do you have any quick thing you want to share with everybody before we've got to run? Um, pretty much just come and visit us tomorrow. We'll have some um, good, some great goodies, and um, yeah, we pretty much just stop by, and we'll be excited to actually get to open this up and start to see everybody. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you have a beautiful Maui day. Thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, that's all the time we have for Business Matters, sponsored by Mokulele Airlines. I'm Pamela Tumpop, President of the Chamber, wishing you all blessings and best wishes for a beautiful day. Aloha.